Welcome back, everyone. It's House Party 5v5 Premier League Playoffs, week number two of the quarterfinals. This is going to be the Lucker Dogs versus Vanquished, the final match. The set is currently tied one to one, and at the end of the last game that Vanquished looked like they would have had on lock around the mid-game phase, Lucker Dogs comes back for an amazing turnaround victory, and now it all comes down to this one. The loser of this match goes home, winner goes on to the semifinals. I'm Captain Flowers here for your play-by-play, -play, joined once again by Fury Golem on color commentary. Fury, what do you make of this one? Explosive ending is a word that gets used a lot, but that last one, just, that was, I I can't imagine this game living up to the, the hype of the last one, and that saddens me a little, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that we will again see the ridiculous comeback plays like that, which are my favorite to watch. The team is down just a little bit. Mm, nicely done, Lucker Dogs. Into this game, Lucker Dogs Blue, vanquished on the red, and we have an immediate Mundo first pick from Lucker Dogs? I don't, okay. This is a champion that has done very, very well recently. He's sitting very high in the win percentage rankings, but even so, he's a champion that has what you might call a lot of counters. And so it's strange to see him picked up immediately, but apparently Lucker Dogs are feeling good after their last win. I'm absolutely not surprised to see Mundo picked up early. He's absolutely ridiculous at this point in time. To see him get past picks and bans, well, to see him get past bans, I should say, is a little bit unusual. So they're going to be picking him up nice and early. And speaking of bans, this game has had the Tom Kench effect. Whenever you're watching a series between two teams and one of the teams says, Nah, we don't need Tom Kench. And, well, they both say it, actually. We don't need to ban him. It's fine. Whichever team ends up getting to pick Tom Kench that game, the other team always bans him the very next game because it's like they forgot how terrible he is to play against. And that's exactly what we see. Last game, Lucker Dogs had to play versus the Kench. This game, they're going to ban that away. Kench is one of those champions who, on paper, he just doesn't look that bad. So after you don't, like you said, after you don't play against him for a while, you forget. You're like, oh, well, we'll just play around that. We'll, we'll deal with it. And then you play against him, and you're like, no, never again. Never again. <laughs> that is the Fiora coming in on the other side. Fiora and Elise, two very, very strong pickups. Now, recently, the meta has gone through some fluctuations where we had some points where there were champions that were just blatantly, oh, you have to first pick this, or you have to, you have to pick this if you, it gets through the ban phase. Right now, there's so many champions like that that it's almost like there aren't any. There's so many prime pickups. I mean, you got Mundo, you got Fiora, you got at least none of, all of those are technically first pick worthy champions. Tristana, not far behind. You can pretty much go all the way down and then you're like, your last two picks are the only thing that aren't first pick worthy in your game. We saw the Tristana work out last game. We'll have to see how well it does this game. Seeing Spanga lock in that rumble almost certainly means that it will be jungle Mundo and not top Mundo. Though I could be wrong, we may just end up seeing a mid rumble. Who exactly knows? Well, technically, it's only going to be the Lucker Dogs that know, and we'll have to find out what ends up being their game plan with this one. But there's quite a lot of magic damage loaded onto these guys. Mundo is a champion that, although he does a good amount of physical damage, he also does quite a lot of magical. The cleavers are magical, the fire is magical. The only real physical damage he's going to do is the bonus auto attack damage he's getting from that E ability, that masochism. So he's going to have a good balance with himself, and we all know how much damage a rumble can do if he's itemized properly and if he doesn't fall too far behind. That's that's the key right there, if he doesn't fall too bar, far behind. I've heard people talk up the Fiora-Rumble matchup different ways. Usually the advantage is given to the Fiora, but plenty of people favor the Rumble as well. Now, whichever side you happen to be on, the one thing you have to know about that matchup is if Rumble falls behind, there's no hope. He has to stay in a position where his damage can threaten the Fiora, or she just goes all in on him every time and he does not get anywhere near his minions. And there's the Vayne pickup. Thank you for that. It's what you would want to see as a, as a caster, I suppose, up against a Mundo pick. When you draft those really high health uber tank champions, the, the response to that has got to be bring percent true damage, which is Fiora and Vayne. Huge chunks of percent true damage that will just eat this guy alive no matter what defense stacks he puts up. Better call Sala hovering over that Blitz rank. 
it's not the most common pick to see in actual competitive organized team play because there's so many ways you can play around it. It looks like he will be switching off of that one, especially all things considered. You're up against a team that already locked in Morgana. You're up against a Fiora that's just able to repost the damn thing anyway. So Blitzcrank's really not the best pick in terms of, you know, what you want to bring against what Vanquished has already locked in. So he's going to switch over to that Leona for the time being. A very strong frontline showing up, even with that Alistar. That's another big frontliner. Between Alistar and Mundo, they're going to be able to provide plenty of protection for Akanda and for Surfon and be able to dive into those enemy backlines and start facilitating the plays. When the enemy team's already picked Morgana, Blitzcrank is a Teemo hover. He's just there to mess with people. There's no way anyone who understand League of Legends at the level that these teams understand League of Legends deliberately picks a Blitzcrank into a Morgana. That's uh, a, a little bit more of a uh, Team O strategy. Oh, a Team O strategy. The classic. The classic. But it looks like we will have all five members on this blue side picked up already. These guys not only have a solid front line, they have a whole ton of AoE AP damage. If these guys are able to force fights in small jungle corridors or some similar confined area, the damage potential between Spanga and Akanda, or rather the, the people that will actually be playing these two champions, we're just saying their names right now because that's who has them locked in, the damage potential between Victor and Rumble, I should say, is going to be absolutely insane, and it's going to be up to Vanquish to make sure they're never fighting in those small corridors. And the immediate Oriana pickup. I mean, for the mid lane, when you're running this Vayne Fiora comp to deal with this Uber frontline, the two champions you generally expect to see coming out of the mid lane are either Oriana or Lulu. And with this setup that they have, they really need more magic damage so that these Uber tanks on the other side cannot just build uh, armor and attack speed reduction, you know, Frozen Heart and that sort of thing. Now, Oriana is so good at bringing a team together, and I mean that very literally. She ults I was gonna say it has to be a pun. That has to be a pun. <laughs> it has to be a pun. She, she's so, so good at it, but more importantly, in this particular scenario, I think the primary value that she has is her ability to speed up Vayne. She puts the ball on the Vayne, she speeds up Vayne, and Vayne just works all the way around the outside of the fight, or catches people out that aren't expecting, like, oh, Vayne, you know, she speeds up a bit when she's chasing people, not that much, and then you Ori ball her, and she just, zoom, gone. Well, we'll have to see if he's able to do that, because keeping Marzion alive is going to be absolutely critical for being able to find an answer to this incredibly tanky Surfon on this Dr. Mundo. That being said, Ginger Fight also is going to be able to take him down. Lucker Dogs are going to have to deal with both percent HP true damage champions in the same game. That alone is enough to let them know, don't let this go super late. Really, really don't. I, on the other hand, really, both sides could make a serious claim to fame for late game. One or the other. Now, Victor here and Oriana almost have the same spout power spikes in the game. Victor a little bit better at that straight up fight and at lane pushing, but Oriana is no slouch at any point in the game. Of course, like you said, Mundo. What you, what you, what you gotta do about the Mundo scaling, but even so. Well, for Mundo, at least the comfort that Vanquish is able to take in Mundo is the fact that although in the early and mid game, Early game, his damage is absurd. Mid game, the damage is still ridiculous and he's getting very, very tanky. But at least once we get into the late game, yes, he's this big brick wall, but he's not like a Ramus or something that's actually able to powerfully initiate a fight or force anybody to actually attack him. He does lose some of his effectiveness in the late game and that you kind of just have to run at people and hope that you're enough of a threat for them to have to answer you instead of just two-shotting your allies and then answering you. So they do have that to rely on. They do have the fact that Surfon doesn't really have any hard CCs that he's able to fall back on. At the same time, at any point in this game, if Womenis and Spanga aren't too far behind, one poorly positioned team fight coming out from Vanquished that Womenis and Spanga are able to get that wombo combo AOE melt your face off combination of ultimates off on, it's going to be a wipe. There's, there is no doubt that this is a really swingy set of comps. It's much like the last one, in that it could go either way, but last time we saw much a much more solid comp coming out from Vanquish. They ran a very tight comp that covered all of the bases and made sure they could do everything that they needed to do. This comp that they're running, if you get a Fiora or a Vayne ahead, and 
Elise is really, really good at getting lanes ahead with those early ganks. They can crush their lanes, but if they fall behind, it's the same problem that was faced last game by Lucker Dogs. If you fall too far behind, you don't necessarily have the tools you need to get back into it. Oriana is good at that, but they have so much of their damage is reliant on their ability to get items. Vayne and Fiora do not have the world's greatest base damages. We're gonna see who ends up coming out on top. It's game number three of the quarterfinal match between Vanquished and Lucker Dogs. Stay tuned. A nice quick loading screen means that we're back and we're live on Summoner's Rift here for House Party 5v5's Premier League. You're live with us for game number three of this quarterfinal match between the Lucker Dogs in blue and Vanquished in the red. Whoever loses this one goes home. Whoever wins goes on to the semifinals. I'm Captain Flowers here for Play by Play, joined by Fury Golem on Color Commentary. Fury, what do you make of this match? Who's going to take this one home? Last time, I gave the comp advantage to Vanquished, and they lost. This time, I would give the comp advantage to Lucker Dogs, but I'm worried of what might happen. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is a pair of teams that are a little bit, honestly, outside of my experience. You do not see these compositions all the time. One, because Mundo's always banned. This guy is not allowed in the game right now. And so to actually see him in play is a bit of a rarity. And I am looking forward to seeing how that pans out, given his hype, if he can match it. But on the other side, we have these tried and true champions, the Fiora, the Vayne, the Oriana, the least these champions that have forever been great. And Morgana is so good at backing up champions that are already good at what they do. We saw last game, Vanquished had a nice early lead for themselves. It looked like they had the game on lock, and then an amazing comeback from Lucker Dogs brings us to where we are right now, which is in the very beginning of game number three. We'll have to see if Vanquished is going to be able to keep themselves off tilt enough to be able to come back and win this one, or is it going to be Lucker Dogs who were able to snowball off the momentum and the guaranteed morale boost they got after that amazing victory from last match that are just able to turn that into another victory now? Vanquish really can't let themselves be put on the back foot because what we saw last game was Vanquish taking a lane advantage and Lucker Dogs making the team plays much, much better. So Vanquish either has to clean up their shot calling quite a bit or they need to do well in the lanes. And we did see, oh, wow, Marzion, this early fights down in the bot lane. There's not a lot of necessarily damage output, but these guys don't want to let it go. They keep hitting each other around with these dinky little level one abilities. Level but 2 abilities now coming out for Vanquish. They won't be able to do a whole lot with it immediately when Menace taking some damage from Ginger Fight in that top lane. It's just all about keeping himself safe for the time being until he's able to find a couple more levels in that Flame Spitter. Back to what I was talking about. I better call Saul. Saul able to find the initiation onto Semrem and Surfon shows up. It's going to be blocked though. That briefcase will not be able to connect. A good black shield shows up from Simrim to keep himself safe for the time being. As well, Menace goes deep onto Ginger Five, but it's a little bit too deep. Forced to flash away. Chat Noir's up in the air looking to come over. Not able to find that cocoon though. He shows up and forces out another flash. Last game, we saw Surfon do the same thing. Both of these junglers good at forcing those flashes nice and early when they're on Elise. And the opposite side now, last game it was two early game pressure junglers. Now you've got this, oh, Weminaz getting hit up so hard by Gingerfight, but now he gets to farm under tower, maybe make up a little bit of that 13 CS discrepancy there. 
Now, Mundo does have some really good base damages, which puts him in a position to hit hard early on, and his jungle clear is actually pretty impressive if you can get over the fact that he damages himself so badly while doing it. However, his lane ganks just are not going Jaguar's to be quite... Jaguar's mid lane able to find the Cocoon. Spang is now under pressure, forced to flash away. He will be able to keep himself alive. But now that summoner spell not available for the next five minutes. And he's got to be careful because the next time the spider comes along could prove deadly. Two ganks, two flashes gone, and on two champions with no dashes. That's a very good start for Chat Noir's putting his team in a place to do good things. Unfortunately, they're only in a place to do good things. They haven't actually gotten any tangible advantages from those flashes yet. The good things are possible. We're just still yet to see them happen, and it's going to be up to Chat Noirs to make those become a reality instead of just a plan. He is waiting very patiently. Topside showing up now. Can he find the cocoon? Rappel is up. He comes on over. Gentrified looking for damage. The cocoon will be able to connect. Wamenis under pressure. He's very close to his own turret, though. If he can get away from this, and first blood comes down for Gentrified. Chat Noirs with the unnecessary flash, but frankly, let him have it as a consolation prize to Weminus. Because that is, you know, you know that Elise is going to revisit you, and there's no way you're getting to that wave that you pushed back out against Gingerfied. It was one of those moments to just step back, recall, or even just hide under tower, and unfortunately, he does get baited into the fight and goes down for it. That is the early advantage that I wanted to see from Vanquished. They need that if they're going to deal with a shot calling that keeps coming out from this Luckerdox team, and already they're going for their first dragon. They're going for a nice early dragon because they know they've got the Mundo. He's able to chuck those cleavers into the thing, do plenty of damage to it, and they will be able to walk away with a five and a half minute dragon number one, getting that objective secured early. Meanwhile, Chat Noirs doing that classic trick 2G, stay in the bush, wait for him to come back, and send him all the way south on the Tilt Express. There's the cocoon, there's the damage, there's the burst. One minute, didn't want to face check that brush, and now he's going to find another death. Also, he blows his ignite and gets nothing for it. His life is so incredibly hard right now. Weminus did a very good job of keeping up in that last game, despite being sat on by the jungle and falling a little bit behind early. He was nonetheless relevant throughout. This time, he's already down two deaths on a Fiora, and we were talking before, Rumble, when he falls behind, does not have a lot of tools for getting that farm around a fed Fiora. Absolutely not. This lane has gone from bad to worse. Fiora's already got Tiamat locked away, while Rumble's still fumbling around with these bargain bin items, trying to actually create something that might be able to help him out, and he's going to struggle. The good thing for him is the fact that he's still Rumble as long as he's able to hit level 6 without just being farmed mercilessly to the point where he can't level up another time. He will be able to have an impact in this mid game with well placed equalizers, but in that 1v1, it's going to be nothing but pain and suffering. Pain and suffering is right. You are up against a Fiora. Pain and suffering is on the table whether you do well or not, and when you do poorly, it's doubled. Uh, here comes Chat Noirs, just in case Rumble didn't feel camped enough. <laughs> a little bit more. He is going to stop for this scuttler first. <laughs> While Mundo does his thing of farming up the jungle as hard as he possibly can. Although Surfon does have this Mundo pick, he's OP right now. Everybody's picking him, everybody's banning him. Mundo is very powerful, but the thing is, he doesn't have the playmaking ability that Chat Noirs has on Elise. He's saying, all right, it's fine. You can go ahead. You can have Mundo. We know he's banned every other game. I'm just going to take Elise and make it so Rumble's life is just awful. And we're going to get Fiora snowballing, because if you want to talk about stuff that's ridiculously strong, let's talk about Fiora. Let's let's not. Let's just skip it. Fiora is, Fiora is what <laughs> Darius was supposed to be, which is truly, truly unstoppable. Yeah, sure, Darius is strong, and everyone lost their minds about him for a while, but of all the champions that really need to be toned down well, a little man, bit... Well, in trouble. Grand Challenge is out. A couple of vitals have been procced. There's the heal. Who cares about Equalizer when you're able to just zerg that health back up, 0 to 100, and Ginger Fight is on a killing spree. Oh good, a 3 to 0, 30 CS up Fiora. This, this won't go poorly at all. I'm sure this is all according to plan. No, this is a very, very bad spot. And Gingerfied did well last time on Fiora, but couldn't quite pack it away. This time, much, much better. If Luckerdogs manages to shut down this Fiora, 
that will be very impressive. However, they don't have to deal with the crazy Alcantos rise this time. And last time they did a good job of dealing with him when he was ahead. So if they can put the same effort towards putting down Gingerfied that they put towards Alcantos last game, they might still be able to stop that ridiculous snowball before it turns into an avalanche. Last game, Alcantos was stopped by being caught out, though, and there's a big difference between catching out a big purple peanut with no mobility and catching out a champion <laughs> with a two-second cooldown dash and an invulnerability frame. It's true. All Ryze has to get away from someone is his ult or his flash. Fiora is much, much better at surviving stuff. I mean, the amount of burst you can stop with her repost is, is frankly unfair. I, I just... It's the one part about her kit that really puzzles me. Repost should block like a thing or two things, not all the things. Well, it's going to be up to this Lucker Dog squad to make sure that they don't pile all those things together during that .75 second invulnerability frame. Surfon makes his way into the brush, and Ginger might go a little bit deep onto this one. He is going to initiate onto a menace, but he does use the repost to block that cleaver. Surfon forced to walk away as Ginger Fide just scoots back to safety. Yeah, Surfon tries to do what Chat Mars did earlier, but unfortunately for him, he's Mundo, not Elise, and Rumble does not have the damage that Fiora does at this point in the game. And frankly, while he did get the flash out, and that will prevent Gingerfied from being really, really aggressive and crushing Weminos, it's not actually going to make Gingerfied fear for his life all that much. Score still 3-0. Still a 1,000 gold advantage going in the favor of Vanquish, but we can't forget the fact that Lucker Dog was able to find that very early dragon, so it is, st it is still pretty much a dead even game. I, I don't know if I'd go that far, but it is much, much closer than we've been talking it up. We have been putting a little bit too much emphasis on how well this viewer is doing. I mean, down in the bot lane, you've got Tristana, Akonda, up 26 CS over his opponent. And getting that early advantage over a Vayne is a very big deal in winning that lane matchup and putting pressure down on that tower. That tower is yeah. already down about to 25%. It's not that much longer before they're comes take down it. from Womenis, though. It looks like topside, the 2v2, is not actually going to be able to break out at all. We have been talking about how ahead the Fiora is, but she's the only one who's ahead. There are smaller leads showing up in both mid and bottom for the Lucker Dogs. It's just Vanquish has such a ridiculous lead top that that's where the attention is being drawn. Globally, these teams are pretty close, and now it's actually going to be that advantage going over to the Lucker Dogs as they're able to take down the first turret. It is really on the mid and bot lane here. Shapanga, Akonda, and Better Call Sally. These guys have got to be able to pull some advantages here. And so far they have. They've got a tower, but here goes Gingerfied on Weminus. Able to find the slow, able to find that damage. Here comes Grand Challenge. One more hit to probably be able to do it. Instead, only takes two. The teleport looks to come in. Gingerfied is ignited, but he doesn't even care. TP from Spango will be canceled as the fourth kill of the game goes over to Gingerfied. Better call Solo with the gank onto the enemy mid laner. Alcantos under pressure, but a good ulti onto two. Simran rotates in. Spanga now the one in trouble, and it's going to be Chad Mars able to take him down. Surf on off to the side. Does manage to make this one a one for one, but here comes Gingerfied. This is the guy you don't want in these fights, and he's going to proc those vitals and take that cow down if he's not careful. A good flash will be able to keep him alive, but a flash forward from Chad Wars might be just a little bit too deep as Akonda cleans up a double buff and now goes for the kill onto Ginger. A beautiful flash away from the binding, and he grabs the shutdown onto the now 4-1 and one Fiora. This is exactly what the Lucker Dogs needed. A lot of the plays both games by the Lucker Dogs have been really enabled by the supports and the solo laners. And honestly, I had frankly missed out on the fact of how well a condom is has been doing. But looking back on his playstyle, on this Tristana, his ability to get in and know when to play safe. I mean, I wish Double Lift would play like this guy so that TSM would have a chance. But he is just going in and out at just the right moments, using that jump to be where he needs to be. And right now, he's 40, almost 40 CS and two kills up on his lane opponent, which is the advantage they need to deal with Ginger Fight and his ridiculous once four and zero, now four and one.
It's also very helpful that Akanda is able to play this way, especially when you're matched up against a super late game hyper carry on Marzion's Vayne. He's keeping her down. He's making it so Vayne can't find a power spike in the mid game. And now Chat Mars mid lane looking to be able to find a cocoon on Shbango. Not going to be able to connect that one thanks to a good flash away. Victor keeps himself alive. But now once again, that safety is off the table. The fancy feet coming out from people against Chat Noirs, they keep expecting him to throw out his cocoon when anyone else oh, would Oh, you're about to get popped one more time. Five and one on this Fiora, and Womenis just can't get away from this. Everywhere he goes, she's there to follow, and he's got no way to escape it, similar to how Marzion's feeling against this now very fed Akanda. That was a lot of damage Akana just put down from a ridiculously long way away. And now this top turret is in serious danger of going down. Unfortunately for them, Ginger Fight is doing a pretty good job of hitting this bottom turret. He probably won't quite be able to clear it out on this wave, but pretty soon, it's not like Weminus is going to be able to stop him. Dragon's going to be evened up as well. Vanquish makes those end up one-to-one -one as Surfon finds Simrim in the jungle, able to take him down nice and easy. That's going to bring this game up to four to six. It's actually a 1,000 gold lead over to Lucker Dogs. Despite the five and one Fiora on their opponents, Vanquish really has to do something amazing with the lead that Fiora has. Ginger Fies has to find a way to get into one of these team fights, find two, three, four kills, and turn this lead into a win because he's the only guy on his team right now that can do so. Better call Sala in a lot of trouble. Marzion pouring arrows into this guy, able to find quite a much, quite a lot of damage, excuse me, from those silver bowls. The damage comes down. Unbreakable will gets broken. Chat Noirs takes down his opponent. Better call Sala. Gonna end up in the grave on that one. His first death of the game. And now 7 to 4 the team score. But it's still the gold advantage going over to the Lucker Dogs. When you're playing Alistar, if you are familiar with Alistar, it can really get e Oh, Shapong got caught. Shpanga. This might be Tratwar's able to find quite a lot, but instead all he finds is a death. The burst from Victor cannot be underestimated. We saw the same mistake last game from Surfon onto Alcantos with Elise. We saw it this time with Chat Noir's Elise onto Shpanga. These Elise players do good ganks, but they underestimate just how hard they can get bursted back. Elise, even when she builds tanky, is a relatively squishy champion, all told. She needs to be able to get those late game tank items in order to be able to withstand the ridiculous amount of burst you get from these properly farmed up AP carries in the mid lane. Despite the nerfs to AP items, the mid lane, a mid laner who knows how to farm is going to be at a, in a position to do so much damage to anyone who's not prepared for it. And Shapanga just takes him apart. This game's still less than 1,000 gold apart. These teams both came to play hard. They both want to make it to the semifinals. And like I said, I'm really looking at Ginger Fied. His performance, more so than any other single person in the game, is going to determine how this one comes out. Able to drop the grand challenge onto Spanga. The gravity field is down. It will enable him to get away for the time being, but he's still on the wrong side of Ginger as Chat Noirs is able to find the follow-up cocoon. The damage comes down. There it is, and that's the burst you're looking for. Spanga's going to drop another free kill going over to Ginger Fied, and that's what he needs to keep doing. Vanquished's ticket to the semifinals is this Fiora. And, oh, Simrim, he's got that shield that keeps him safe. Anyone else would have probably been dead right there, but Surfon in real trouble here against Chat Noirs and Ginger Fied. He popped the ultimate to himself alive, but now that he doesn't have it, all Ginger and Surfon have to do is wait for that to go away, and then if he makes one more wrong step, they're going to be able to collapse and punish him for that. They've got to be aware of the rest of this Lucker Dogs team, though, potentially rotating down through the jungle to stop them. Lucky Dogs seems a little bit wrong-footed right now. They're not quite sure how to position because Weminus has no pressure. His... Whew, close. If he shows up against pretty much anyone right now, he just dies. And so they're positioning, trying to, like, guard all of the lanes, and unfortunately, it's leaving them open. Look at this top lane up here. There's a huge wave crashing into it. Akonda is going to be able to pick up most of it, but even so, that leaves their bottom lane, or excuse me, their mid lane vulnerable to this big push by Vanquish. Vanquish doing what they can to make sure they don't fall behind in this one. They know how last game went. They know if they get sloppy, Lucker Dogs will be able to punish it. So they've got to make sure, especially on Ginger Fied, to not overstep their boundary. Pick smart fights. Make sure you're not overextending into something you shouldn't be. <laughs> Mundo Cell indeed. Unfortunately, now Ginger Fied gets to take this top lane. He gets to go 
wherever he pleases, regardless of whether there's a Mundo on the map or not. And unfortunately, there is this call to take mid lane, but can they get it down before... <laughs> wow, that's an interesting rumble roll. An equalizer used essentially as a zoning tool, preventing Vanquish from being able to go in on the Lucker Dust. He's able to find quite a bit of damage onto these health bars, are sitting all around half, and this might be a continued push from the Lucker Dogs. They gotta be careful though. Yes, they currently have health advantage, but Spanga is low, and a turret dive is still a turret dive at 18 minutes. This could go very, very wrong, especially if Ginger Fight is able to proc that heal early in the fight. There goes Mundo. He wants to push them away. They're going to get this tower for themselves to answer it up. It is three to two. So there is a turret lead for the Lucker Dogs. And it is amazing that they managed to put that pressure down, all things considered. But even so, they have put themselves in a position that I, I find myself increasingly, increasingly worried, worrying trends about the way they're positioning themselves on the map. Luminous has got to be able to get some of this farm. He's got half, half of Ginger, uh, Ginger Fight's farm right now. Hey, at least he's out farming Mundo, right? Right. That's that's always a good sign when you're out you're you're even in CS roughly with your jungler. On the other hand, Mundo has a ridiculous amount of CS. I mean, look at him compared to Elise. That is 33 CS up in a jungler. That's that's not a small amount. That's just the power of the Mundo power farm, I suppose. He does have that Cinder Hulk completed with the Skirmisher Saber. Elise going for the same Cinder Hulk, but instead, gotta make sure she has the warding power of that new jungle item that Riot decided to introduce with the preseason. That Tracker's Knife gonna be able to get her team a little extra vision around the map. Not so much concerned about the 1v1 like Mundo is, but instead making sure that they have the knowledge and the vision to make the fights happen where they need them. Normally, I favor the Tracker's Knife because more wards on the map is something that's really hard to beat, especially now that you cannot buy wards. However, with Mundo, as you were talking about way back at the beginning of all of this, his ability to deal damage falls off pretty hard late game, and he can really get bursted down by these true damage champions. So if he packs that Challenger's Smite, that allows him to be a much more effective champion into the later game. It allows him to get onto those big carry champions and put down some damage that they have to really respect. Everybody looking to square off around this dragon. Dragon number three is live. The teams are dead even in gold. This fight is going to determine a lot about the tempo of the rest of the game. Something that does not get said about Elise enough, her Spiderling's ability to block skill shots is so bloody useful. She just right there, they probably could have caught on to her with Surf on if her little teeny spider legs hadn't been there to block his books. But they <laughs> this dragon now. dies so fast. Lucker Dog's going for Dragon. They're able to take it down so very quickly that it's not going to even be a chance for Vanquish to try to stop that one. Pink's coming out now. It's Lucker Dog's looking to potentially collapse. They know that Marzion is topside. They know he was cleaning up those creeps. They know they might have a chance to actually push here. They're going to look for it, but they won't be able to find it. <laughs> nice, nice blind cleaver there. Spanga pulled Surfer, in. That was the Oriana ultimate, but a good flash away. Gonna be able to keep him safe from that follow up. Cocoon and Binding both come out at the same time, but Spanga able to be quick on that summoner spell to get himself out of trouble. Oriana ultimate is down. That's a very powerful defense and anti dive tool that they now do not have at their disposal that might enable Lucker Dogs to go further for this push. <laughs> the Rumble ult again behind the tower, so useful for pushing people back. Zerfon now stunned into that wall and taken down immediately. The power of Marzion to melt through these tanks. And now it's Banquish on the offensive. Unbreakable will keeping Buttercall Sala alive for the time being, but a wonderful turnaround coming out from Spanga. Able to drop that field onto everybody and start doing some crazy AoE. Still a one for zero in the favor of Vanquish, but Lucker Dogs have momentum. They're going to be able to take down the turret. That trade ultimately goes their way. That Lucker Dog's ability to make a call and stick it boggles my mind on occasion. And by on occasion, I mean both of these last two games that I've been watching him do it. They, the Rumble, despite not being at all relevant in the game in terms of laning pressure, has been doing such a good job with those Rumble Ultimates, placing them perfectly to slice the team in half, putting Vanquish on the back foot right away so that that a Konda on that Tristana can put down all the damage onto the turrets. His placement for those equalizers, every single time they're making these turret pushes, he puts them horizontally across the lane, 
just behind the turret. That's the sweet spot where players normally want to group up and walk around in little circles, waiting to see if somebody's going to try to push the turret too hard, somebody's going to try to dive or something. That's the safe spot to be. If you're behind that line that Rumble puts down, you're not close enough to defend the turret. If you're in front of that line, then it's going to be Lucker Dogs that are able to force a fight on you because you're too far up. The placement couldn't be better, and it's enabling his team to take these objectives and catch him up just from Global Gold. And this is... Spirit Visage, Merc Treads, Mundo. This is, he's like, I'm not even gonna bother itemizing, itemizing armor because the enemy team's AD champions are all just basically true damage to me. So I'm gonna make sure that Alcantos and Chat Noirs cannot touch me. Unfortunately, it did not pay off in that last turret dive there where he had to deal with all of those turret hits. It chunked him down very, very quickly and turned around what might have otherwise been a dominating victory for the Lucker Dogs into a minor victory. Marzian and Simrim looking for some damage on to Better Call Sala. They will be able to find it, and that cow gets turned into a beef patty pretty damn quick. Marzian takes it down for his second kill of the game, but now damage over the wall comes out in return from Lunderdog. Akanda on a killing spree. That's a much more important target than the support, and Spanga looking to follow up and find plenty more damage on to Chat Noirs. Surfon will not be able to chase him any further. Will Menace in bot side looking to defend against Ginger 5. He's barely able to keep himself alive under turret. He will be able to with the help of that flash, but he's got to be careful. That's Flash and Ultimate for Weminos. He cannot stay in this bot lane up against the Gingerfied, but Gingerfied does not know that he's safe down here. He's going to recall, and here goes Lucker Dogs on another risky Baron call. Akanda able to find one kill, a good flash, looking to be able to make it two. Can he find the damage to take Marzion down? One hit, two hits, will not be able to find that third one. It looks like Lucker Dogs' Baron attempt has been stopped for the time being, but not before Akanda finds himself his fourth kill of the game. Akanda's play has been pretty bloody glorious both of these both of these games. He has really showed up for his team and taken advantages where they're to be had and hasn't overstepped himself at all. And riding that line between playing aggressive and well and oh Shapon. in a that. lot of trouble. A good Oriana all gonna make that trouble turn into double. That's gonna be two for free. Going over to Vanquish. Team Rocket blasting off. There they go. And now it's going to be, I believe, the Baron call by Vanquish. And once this Pink Words goes down, there's not going to be any vision on that objective for this uh, Lucker Dogs team. And if any champion takes this down fast, it's Vayne. Yeah. Vanquish definitely has a great team to take Baron down nice and quick, especially when Akonda gets blinded up. Marzion able to find the follow up shot, and that is a shutdown. That's the kill you needed. Baron just went from free to freer, unless Rumble comes in with a miracle ultimate. Ginger fight into the middle of everyone as Akonda grabs the shutdown onto Marzion with the help of his old pal Baron. Surf on in the middle of everyone, able to find the shutdown now onto Chat Noirs, looking for more onto Simrim. Mundo won't die! He's putting so much damage down onto everyone, but Ginger Fide swoops in at the last second to take him out. A good lasers from Spanga. He's able to find two. Ginger Fide now has to be careful. He's the last man standing for Vanquished, and better call Sala wants to take him down. I spoke a little too soon with Akanda, apparently. He does overstep. Oh, Marzion has AFK'd. There is going to be a pause coming in. Now, apparently, this is, you know, they call it the caster curse. I talk up Akanda, and he immediately face checks and gets killed. But all the same, he pulls the enemy team off of the Baron. So that is no Baron for Vanquished. And they lose four members, and Ginger Fight barely gets out with his life. This game is looking better and better for Lucker Dogs as time goes on but they still have to deal with Vanquished being almost even with them in gold and having, like we've been talking about, the uber scaler of Vayne and Fiora just does her thing. This game, despite the fact that all the kills we've been seeing, we do have 26 kills on a 26 minute game. It's not like we're looking at a low action match here. These guys are still only a little over 1,000 gold apart at the 26 minute mark. Neither team is really making any super critical mistakes that the other team is able to punish them for. They're just going blow for blow throughout this entire thing. I love games like this. I love games like both of these games have been. Really fun plays. Stuff I'm looking at, I'm like, I could never do that in a million years. Just fantastic. And not just individual solo play, but also as well, the team fight, the ability to make the calls. And these teams moving around each other are like a hive mind on occasion. Not every time these guys aren't LCS, but half the time I'm looking at them and I'm like, 
they know way too much about each other. They're playing really, really well this game. And you can tell that these guys realize this isn't just a regular season match. Oh, a win's a win's, a loss is a loss. Who cares? This is the difference between going on, playing more, and potentially being able to contend for the grand prize at the end and being done. Whoever loses this game is done. No pressure or anything. But there's nothing else to the house party 5v5 season for them after this game unless they walk away with the enemy's nexus destroyed. And imagine the legend for Lucker Dogs if they win this. Yeah, no, we, uh, we didn't show up for our first game. We couldn't be bothered. Oh, yeah, and we let them think they were getting ahead in the second game. But no, no, they never had a chance. And then if they can manage to take this third game, that will be such a great story to tell. Unfortunately, if they lose, it's just as bad a story to have to tell. Yeah, we, uh, maybe we could have taken the third game, but we, we didn't show up for the first game. It's Our what bad. we talked about in the lobby of the first game we cast of these, what was effectively game two. Lucker Dog's greatest enemy in League of Legends is just the word schedule. If they can make it to games, they show up and they play really, really well. It's just getting there. And apparently, we're having Marzion's connection issue is not a short one. It is going to continue. Hopefully, we can get him back into this game. It would be very unfortunate to have these two spectacular matchups uh, end that way. The 4v5s, they're not exciting for anyone. No, 4v5s are absolutely the most terrible, anticlimactic way to have to finish something. It's an awful way to be. Everybody's had a solo queue game before where it's super close, neck and neck, and then all of a sudden somebody DCs or rage quits on one side, and this super climactic, epic game just ends. And it's even worse when it's actually a tournament match that some has something riding on it, especially when it's already tied one-to-one -one like this coming down to that. Oh, yeah. Anyone who's ever been to pros in solo queue knows they know. This is this is when people AFK and DC and when it's you're just like, no, please, no. Yeah, you can see everybody on Vanquish right now just crossing their fingers. Let him come back. It's it is the only hope. It is it is all of ours only hope. Please, Marzian Kenobi. Yes, <laughs> you are the one. Marzion will be back in for the time being. I don't know. They were talking about the potential to maybe have him reconnect, disconnect, and reconnect again. I don't know if this is the actual reconnect, or I don't know if he will be disconnecting and reconnecting again to fix whatever error it is. But hopefully he is able to get whatever problem he has resolved soon. One, one can only hope. We have the ready-ups coming out. Hopefully we will be in here shortly. Yes, we, we are indeed in. We're back, we're live, and the game is going strong once again. We still only have a 1,500 gold lead, not even. Separating these two teams, 26 minutes into the match, Dragon number four spawning in about 25 seconds. One big play, one way or the other, is going to determine a lot in this match. We're just not seeing any fights really go strongly one way or the other. Yeah, it's, it's very much been a back and forth all game, but... Right now, Akana just picked up his Rapid Fire Cannon. Now, that's Rapid Fire Cannon Static Shiv Infinity Edge on a Tristana. That is the poke nightmare from hell if you're the other team. The ability for that to put out damage that cannot be answered is so much. And here they go. Lucker Dogs immediately starting on this dragon. They want number three. They're going to take it down super easy. No can get it before at all. their jungler can even get there. Who cares yeah. about the enemy team? You're own jungler can't even make it there by the time Akonda shreds the thing. Sir, on we know you take dragon fast, but we take dragon faster. Deal with it. He's gonna have to. I mean, what else can he say? Mundo might go where he pleases, but Tristana just takes the dragon in about three and a half seconds flat, and there's nothing else anybody needs to say about it. Akonda now finding quite a lot of damage onto Ginger with just a couple autos. The what? dash comes out from Ginger, and there's another pause at the worst possible time. Right in the middle of Ginger fight ulting, Marzion back out and back in again, hopefully this time for real. Akonda, please, please save yourself. And Ginger fight right now, he has to repost the Tristana ult. It's the only way he's going to catch up to this champion. Marzion is out again. Apparently, uh, there's a storm where he is or something. His, his, his internet is a ping pong ball. We can, it literally paused at just the right time to see Grand Challenge actually being casted. Like, you can see the big thing of light on Akonda and the ring showing up that Gingerfied needs to stay inside of. 
right as he's casting the ability, that's when the pause comes out. The pause will be taken down again as Akanda gets himself to safety, and now Chat Noir is looking to collapse onto Shpanga. Shpanga now wanting into the waiting arms of Ginger 5, but Surfon and the rest of those Lucker dogs are waiting nearby. Chat Noir is going to go down as one man has finds himself a but a beautiful shockwave comes out from Alcanto. Marzion tumbling into the enemy team only to find certain deaths. Ginger 5 reposes 3, he's on a rampage, taking down one minute one more time, and now he's on to Spanga. If he can find those vitals, it's gonna be huge, but it's not gonna be huge enough. The shutdown comes out, but it's also going to be Spanga dropping in the backdrop. Two left alive on both sides. Better call Sala looking to go back in as Surfon cleans up Alcantos. One's dropped on each team, one person left for each one of these sides. Simrim still alive under the turret. He doesn't have the ability to actually fight Surfon. Just doing what he can to clear these waves away and make it so Surfon's life of pushing is as hard as possible. We talk about this game being close and holy smokes, the one for one, the four for four. However, side note, they took out Akonda immediately. Akonda was not even in that fight. He was just gone. And even so, it went 4 for 4. So once they finally get this Tristana, who has been the damage highlight for his team, actually into these fights, that was about as good as Vanquish could really have hoped for, and it did not go well. Vanquish and Lucker Dogs just will not give each other an inch. Still a 2,000 gold game. It goes a little bit further in the favor of Lucker Dog, but it's nothing that actually matters. 2,000 gold in a 50,000 gold match doesn't mean anything. It's all about finding the right targets and being able to collapse on them without losing all your own valuable targets first. Better Call Sally really, really wants those spiderlings, but they just skitter away from him. Barrett posturing time, but either team goes in on this. It's crazy dangerous, and Ginger Fight is down there split pushing. Ginger fight, split pushing, and Lucker Dogs know that even if they try to send a menace down there, he can't hold against Ginger. They tried that already. So they have to either force something 5v4 or send everybody to answer Ginger because there's no way they can leave any one person down there to try to fight this Fiora. And they have to do it now where they're going to lose their tier 2 for nothing. They already you know, lost the tier 2 for nothing, but it looks like they're going to try to at least go tier 3 for Baron. Everybody else from Vanquish looking to position around the edge from this one, but Baron dropping off pretty quickly. Down to about 2,000 HP, Chat Noir's over the wall, and it's going to be Akonda, able to keep that one safe. Up and over goes Elise, Alcanto shows up, and he gets taken down immediately. Surf on being shot over the wall, Chat Noir's going to drop as well. It's a 2 for 0, going in favor of the Lucker Dog, but Ginger Fide has his sights set on the bot lane in him. One man is coming in, trying to slow him down, trying to stop this objective take. All he has to do is buy enough time for his team to clean up Ginger. Ginger realizing that and getting himself away for the time being, but Surfon wants to collapse. Grand challenge is down, Ginger wants to heal. Can he find it? The answer is yes, but he's totally out of mana. Well, man, that's gonna be able to burn him down nice and easy. The shutdown goes over to Surfon. Completely out of mana, and he still almost kills both of them. Sure, <laughs> it's so dangerous. You don't need but... mana to whack one of those little spots showing up on the side of somebody. Thankfully enough for Ginger, but not thankfully enough to be able to keep him alive. Three still dead on the side of Vanquish as the Lucker Dogs look to break middle lane inhibitor turret. They will be able to find that as Akonda does so much damage to Marzion with just a single auto attack. And now he's looking to put that much pain back onto this inhibitor as well. Out comes Chat Noirs, but he almost goes down immediately. You've got to respect the damage on this crit. The, the, he hit Marzion once and took half his health. I mean, that's got to be terrifying. Oh, absolutely. With the power of that opening shot coming up from Rapid Fire Cannon instead of Shiva, Shibanga takes a shockwave, but it's only a single man Orianna ulti, and now that tool is no longer at their disposal. While everybody else from Lucker Dogs is chilling out in this mid lane, we can see Akonda taking the inhibitor and saying, okay, I'm done here. I'm going back bottom. We're going to rotate. We're going to take more objectives, and we're going to play this Tristana game. Ay, 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 ay. Lucker Dogs. They are so, so good at this late game rotational turret taking. It's amazing to me. They gave up a little bit to take that Baron, but they just barely secured it. That smite coming in, leaving it with 37 health and Akonda taking it down. So, so close to disaster for Lucker Dogs, but instead it becomes such a victory. They are now 5k gold up. Now, that's not necessarily all that much, but it is a 3k jump over where they were before, which is, as they say, a barren power play.
Akanda completing his fourth real non-boot item of the game, going for that Blade of the Ruined King, an item we don't see very much anymore. It definitely fell off. It got more expensive, and the stats got worse. So the item really isn't that great anymore, but it still has its niche that it's able to fill. It's going to be Akanda picking that one up for more kiting potential, especially against Ginger 5, trying to go deep on top of him this game. And now Lucker Dogs looks to push up this bottom lane inhibitor turret. A good Oriana ult, but it's only on to two, and it's not the two that matters. Better Call Solid going to take a lot of damage, but that's not the guy who the damage actually matters on. Chat Noir is eating a lot from these lasers, as well Menace soaks up what he can, trying to get away. Spanga eating even more damage as there comes the initiation. Lucker Dogs needs to force this turret down if they want this fight to happen, and Akanda is able to do just that. Bars going to force the flash away as the damage comes out, Nakanda takes him down. This might be Lucker Dogs going for the game-ending push. Akanda up and over, finding so much damage onto Akanda, but now Ginger 5 is going to be able to clean him up. The heal is down. Simrim's trying to provide covering fire, but Ginger can't survive alone. Not 1v4, but it's going to be Alcantos keeping the game alive. Taking down Spanga. Three dead on the side of this Lucker Dogs team. They've only got the tanks alive. Better call Sala about to die. Surf on wailing on these Nexus turrets. And now the Nexus is his very next target. So much magic resistant health on this guy, it takes these two years to burn him down as Surfon may just be able to walk away. <laughs> he needs to walk away though if he's going to be able to walk away. They just got out early there. Gingerfied really managing to save the game there at the last moment for Vanquish. But, oh man, this is going to be a very difficult defense for Vanquish with all of their Nexus turrets down and their missing two inhibitors. This is the easy life for Lucker Dogs. They'd have to work to throw it at this point. This is Dragon number four. If we do end up going to Dragon number five, I would be very surprised. This game for Lucker Dogs now just amounts to work up slowly towards the enemy base. And at this point, Vanquish has to fight them pretty much on the steps. They have to make sure that Lucker Dogs don't get in range of that Nexus or they're just going to be able to turn their attention to it and burn it down in about two and a half seconds. Vanquish is not going to be allowed to kite backwards, take fights where they can, allow Vayne to tumble around. It's do or die. And Akana has to be careful to not get caught. I mean, that is really the turnaround condition for Vanquish. And we've already seen one crazy turnaround today. It could happen. And Akonda's the place to start. If they can kill Akonda, Weminus has managed to work himself up to the point where he's no longer a hilarious joke when it comes to damage and only useful for uh, zoning at turrets. But even so, he's not really that big of a threat. He's 128 CS. He's now behind his jungler in that regard. And that leaves Shiponga, who, while he does a good amount of damage, his ability to put out the sustain damage for fights isn't what it needs to be at this point in the game. So Akonda has to keep himself safe. The farm on one menace is over 100 lower than every other carry in the game as Surfon ends up caught out as the grand challenge comes down. The victor ultimate is used for pretty much nothing. That actually works out pretty well in favor of Vanquish, but now Lucker Dogs and Akonda are beating down this turret. It's Chat Noir taking a lot of damage. A wonderful equalizer in the middle of everyone. Team Chat is about to fall. Simrim the first one to drop. A good Oriana ulti on the two's gonna be able to take down Surfon. Akonda trying to get himself away from Ginger Fight, but Ginger's got the flash and he's got the move. He takes him down. The Oriana shield on top of Ginger. He's trying to go for Shapanga. He needs a couple more hits to be able to do it, but that gravity field and that Alistar have something else to say. Alcantos, the last man standing. Shapanga and Better Call Sala still threatening this Nexus. One more hit's gonna do it. And ladies and gentlemen, Lucker Dogs go on to the semifinal. Lucker Dogs, well earned indeed. Just, just well earned, guys. That was an absolutely awesome series to watch. Vanquish put up one hell of a fight, but ultimately the Lucker Dogs overcome the initial bad situation they're put in after forfeiting game one. They get a come from behind victory in game number two. Game number three is dead even and then suddenly explodes off of the back of this Tristana. Well played, Lucker Dogs. We're going to see you in the semifinals. GG to Vanquished as well. Hell of a hard-fought run. You made it all the way to quarters, and we're looking forward to seeing more action from you next season here at House Party 5v5 Premier League.
that is going to be it for now from me and Fury, guys. Stay tuned, though, because quarterfinals are not yet over. Coming up next, we've got Space Age Wizards versus the Dream Killers. That's going to be cast by Welcome to Thunderdome and Deck Club A, so stick around to watch them and that game. Hopefully, it'll be as close and entertaining as this one was. And then, of course, with the conclusion of that game comes the conclusion of the quarterfinals for the Premier League. We'll then be playing the semifinals for the Minor League tomorrow. And then the weekend after that comes the semifinals for the Premier League, as well as the Grand Final Championship for the Minor League itself. Tons of action coming up here in the future here at House Party 5v5. Follow the stream if you want to keep up with it. We've also got shoutcasted in-house matches that any of y'all out there can play in Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Come show us what you got. Come show these teams what you got. Maybe you'll find yourself playing on one of these upper-level teams here come next season at House Party. Once again, I'm Captain Flowers here for Fury Golem. The two of us will be catching you later, but stick around because more games are heading your way.